Hopefully you're staying cool this week. Hopefully one of the cool things you get to do on a week in and week out basis is tune in to our town. And the show starts right now here on 94.9 and 99.1 The River. My name is Darren Swenson. Our town, as always, brought to you by Decora Bank and Trust. A little later on in the program, we will talk to Jason Passmore. He is with Howard County Business and Tourism. It is the Norman Borlaug Harvest Festival this weekend in Cresco. All sorts of fun taking place and we'll talk to jason about that event a new uh, program uh, from the decora parks and recreation department and other parks and rec uh, matters will be talked about later on in the program there's going to be a fall baseball league uh, it's a, a combination program between the decora parks and recreation department and luther college baseball so luther college coach brian nickel and the uh, Decora Parks and Recreation uh, Superintendent, Recreation Superintendent uh, Blake Mullen will join us. But first things first, uh, we are going to be talking with Travis Thomas. He is with the Decora Police Department, and we are going to uh, start having uh, members of the Decora Police Department on probably about once a month on this show. And with school back in session, with uh, the kiddos out in the streets, with the kids excited and going this way and that way, and pretty much all of society doing the same thing right now, safety has to be paramount to uh, keep our precious uh, cargo of young people safe and make sure uh, they get to and from school and uh, back to their families at night. And we're going to talk about uh, travel safety and school uh, travel uh, safety, crosswalk safety, et cetera. We're going to be talking with Trevor Thomas uh, from the Decorah, Par the Decorah Police Department. He will be our first guest uh, this morning here on Our Town. It's brought to you by Decorah Bank and Trust, and you're listening to it on 94.9 and 99.1 The River. Having a conversation this morning with Trevor Thomas. He is with the Decorah Police Department, and obviously uh, school is now underway, and uh, there's a lot of uh, precious cargo uh, moving around our streets and our uh, highways and um, a lot of things that uh, all of us need to uh, be careful with uh, regarding uh, the early days of school. And Trevor, uh, what are, in general are some good things for uh, folks to keep in mind, knowing the fact that uh, there's kids that are going to be uh, in situations that we haven't seen for about three, four months. Right. Right. Yeah. So um, like you were saying, um, these next few mornings are really throughout the entirety of the school year. Downtown traffic, um, highway traffic is going to be busy right around that school bus loading, unloading time in the mornings and in the afternoons and evenings. There's going to be a lot of people out and about. There's going to be a lot of foot traffic. Um, so we got to be we have to be vigilant for the people, um, for pedestrians, bicyclists um, and other motorists out there in the school buses, especially. Um, and that 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 falls on everybody too. Um, pedestrians need to watch where they're going and walking, um, follow the rules of the, the road for that. Same with the bicyclists um, and motorists alike. Uh, and I think uh, probably it falls on adults because kids are excited. They're enthused to see their friends again they're excited about a new uh, school year and especially the young ones uh we were young once and uh we probably uh, didn't put everything into our train of thought that we should have uh so a lot of this uh in my mind uh relies on us adults uh, being vigilant uh would you agree absolutely um like you said kids are kids are excited i've got little ones of my own they're ready to go back to school they're excited uh to, to, to see their friends. And if they, you know, a lot of times they see their friend across the street, we have to make sure we know what the kids are doing. Um, like with my kids, it's, it's hold, hold hands when we cross the street and look both ways a couple of times. Um, cause you just, you, you don't know. And we want to be extra careful, especially, um, in the mornings, the evenings around school time, but that, you know, that's all day as well. And related to uh, crosswalk laws, uh, what do uh, folks need to keep in mind from both a pedestrian and a uh, motor vehicle uh, standpoint when it comes to going to a crosswalk near a school? Right. Um, so obviously pedestrians um, legally have the right of way. Um, when you're coming up on a crosswalk and you know people are crossing it, we have to slow down. We have to stop for those people to cross. Um, particularly around the schools when there's a lot of foot traffic around, we have to be extra careful, extra cautious because people are going to be moving. Um, and we're not used to this yet for the school year. It's, you know, it's just kicking off. Um, 
And then for pedestrians, be careful when we're crossing the streets. Yes, you have the right of way, but we have to watch out for traffic. Um, you know, us as law enforcement within the city and the county and, and so forth, we're going to be out there. We're going to be making patrols and making sure people are safe. But we ask everybody um, in the car, on your feet, on the bike to be to be to be careful and watch all directions and kind of just be like we were saying earlier, be vigilant. And you mentioned uh, how you uh, handle the crossing of the street with your own kids. Uh, how would you advise parents addressing this uh, with the uh, kids to make sure uh, their kids uh, remain safe? Right. Um, talk with your kids about it. Um, talk with them about the the dangers of crossing the street. And, um, you know, just because you see that car, that doesn't mean that car doesn't see you. So, you know, I like to hold hold my kid's hand as we cross the street. Um, they're young enough. They still like to hold my hand as we cross the street um and look both ways and look both ways twice um you know cars can kind of come around the corner you didn't see the first time so we we just you know the more caution the better and i know uh, from a law enforcement perspective one of the big points of emphasis is school buses when they're stopped and that uh stop arm is out you need to stop behind them to uh just tell us how important that is absolutely um um, the, it, it's extremely important. These school buses are carrying our young ones. Um, the people that are going to be that we're that we're raising to be in our community and um, our, our precious cargo. Um, so we have to be extremely careful around these school buses. They're, you know, some of the the code for the Iowa code reads: you need to stop 15 feet at least behind that school bus when the when the lights are flashing. Um, and when you're approaching it from the rear, you've got to be 15 feet away. Um, same from the front. And if, you know, on, on these two lane roads, if the, the ambers and the reds are flashing, you cannot pass by the school bus. Um, that means there's going to be loading or unloading of this of these kids coming across the street. So we have to give the buses their time and space. And we're we're really asking motorists and everybody alike to just give yourselves extra time, extra space, slow down and use as much caution as you can around these school buses, because it's it's going to, you know, they they disrupt traffic, but they're they they've got the lights and they're there to to slow everybody down. And if you're silly enough to try to pass a uh, staff school bus, uh, the penalties in the state of Iowa are very severe, and frankly, they should be. Right, correct. So there's zero tolerance um, from a law enforcement standpoint on some of this. If a violation does occur, it gets investigated. Um, you know, your first offense, you're looking for, you know. The fines can be uh, $345 to $900 for the first offense, and it's going to have a 30-day license suspension. Um, you know, that's that's the, those are the penalties, and, and they get steeper for more offenses. So we really, you know, I was cracking down on this, and, and, and for good reason. Um, and if, if there's also a good resource for, for a full description of the laws and the regulations on that is the iowadot.gov slash school bus has a lot of information that people can can access if they need detailed information on the Iowa code and the law um, references. And I think it's one of those things we need to keep in mind. I know uh, we try to allow ourselves a little extra time and maybe slow down a little bit, but with getting kids ready in the morning and uh, getting off to uh, your job and your to-do list at your job is 10 deep and uh, your kids' to-do list is 20 deep, sometimes you get a little behind schedule trying to get the kids off to school and getting you to work. And sometimes we get a little impatient, but that impatience needs to be squelched because uh, if you get impatient and you do something silly that perhaps has a tragic consequence, uh, you're getting to work and uh, you're getting your kids to uh, school is something probably you won't have to worry about because uh, you're going to be uh, punished and punished you really. Correct. Yes. Um, yeah. Everybody runs late sometimes. Everybody's to do list get longer every day. Homework is getting wrapped up in the morning. Um, everybody's rushing to get out the door. You grab your piece of toast, your cup of coffee, and you're in a rush to get to school and get kids drop off, dropped off and get to work. Um, but the most important part of all of that is that we get to our destinations our kids get to school you get them to school you get to work um without incident and you know that's for the for safety of everybody anything uh, we're missing trevor anything else you want to pass on on this specific issue or uh, anything related to uh, law enforcement at this point 
Um, not a whole lot. Um, I'm wishing everybody a happy back to school. Um, everybody's excited for it. At least I know my little ones are. Um, and yeah, just we got to make sure we we slow down and use caution and 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 enjoy this next school year, 2023. Forever appreciate you taking the time to uh, talk about this very important issue. And uh, everybody, uh, play it safe out there, and uh, and uh, make sure the precious cargo that uh, are being transported in uh, cars and buses and walking to school uh, they remain safe on their uh, way to school. Appreciate the time as always, Trevor, and thank you and everyone at the Decorah uh, Police Department for what you do to keep our community safe. Absolutely. Thank you for this opportunity to spread the important word on this and, and get people being cautious on the road. Trevor Thomas with the Decorah Police Department. Our guest uh, right now is uh, Luther College baseball coach Brian Nickel and uh, Blake Moen from the uh, Decorah Parks and Recreation uh, Department. Blake got the memo to wear his blue today. That's always a, a yep. good thing. Uh, He's a very obedient uh, person, at least that's what Sarah says. But we're talking about a, a new uh, fall baseball opportunity, which is a combination partnership with the Decorah Parks and Recreation Department and the Luther College baseball program. And we'll start with you, Coach Nickel. Uh, where did this idea come from, and uh, how, are, how are you guys going to put it into uh, fruition? Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, I, I, Blake, uh, back up to, I don't even know what years it was when I first was hired. Blake was a student assistant with us and helped us coach for a couple of years. So definitely have had a previous relationship with Blake and the Park and Rec office working with them. And it's always been uh, very easy to work with and fun. And one thing we really try to do for our guys, I think the purpose of camps is to, you know, help our guys learn more about baseball. If you can teach someone the game, you really start to learn the game. Um, and, and secondly, right, we want them to take pride in Luther College so they represent Luther College when they're doing these camps. And lastly, they're becoming part of Northeast Iowa. So this is an awesome partnership where we feel grounded in Northeast Iowa and be part of the community and get to know some of these kids and give back to the community. And getting to work with Park and Rec, I think, just uh, really solidified the deal. And uh, Blake, I know uh, you guys are busy with your fall programming. I don't believe uh, this is something that Park Rec has, have, uh, has offered before uh, in the fall, at least. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, no, it definitely is there, Darren. Um, it's kind of all stemmed. Actually, I talked to a few parents that put on a fall league last year. Uh, Pat O'Shea, got to give him a shout out. He um, had talked with me a little bit in the offseason about, uh, you know, Park Rec maybe being uh, involved and more involved with the fall league program and then what it kind of led into was as we got through the summer and coach nickel and i um as coach nickel talked about our previous history um just obviously know each other stay in touch just kind of made sense that uh if we're gonna do a fall ball league why would we not get luther baseball involved and um, have their players and whatnot involved uh, another thing that was a no-brainer for me uh, a lot of coach nickel's staff or sorry coach nickel's players are part-time staff members for the decor park and rec department that do a variety of programs from basketball to baseball to other programs. So I, I know a lot of his players already, um, the good quality guys that he recruits and whatnot to be a part of this fall ball program. So as coach Nichols said, it was a no brainer from park and rec standpoint to partner with Luther baseball. And uh, Brian, uh, how important is it in your mind for, guys that uh, participate in your program, participate in the great game of baseball to give back to the game that has given them so much. Very important, Darren. We we try to, whenever we do camps, I try to tell them, and, and this is going to be third and fourth graders, right? We're going to have all different uh, levels of baseball that they've played, some with great skill sets, some with not so great so skill sets. And that's the whole point of this. We want to give kids opportunity. And I try to get them to look back to when they were uh, a third or a fourth grader and the greatness of baseball that they weren't necessarily obsessed with how nice their spikes were, their glove was. They just wanted to play some ball. And that's what we wanted to create here is, Hey, we don't want you to quit your fall sport. We don't want you to give up on something else, but if you don't have anything else going on, you want to play some ball, have some fun, learn some new skills, try some new positions. This is an opportunity for us to help provide and, and give back to those kids and give our kids an opportunity. I think we get more out of it than the kids are going to our, our baseball program. And Blake, uh, how are folks? Uh, how should folks uh, sign up for this program? What are the specific details uh, of the dates, uh, cost, etc.? Yeah, yeah, you bet, you bet. No, thanks, Darren. Um, just kind of looking at things. We'll be starting on Sunday, starting September 10th, and going to Sunday, October 1st. So we'll be running um, essentially those Sunday afternoons from three to five each day, uh, give or take five o'clock. Um, 
Coach Nickel can certainly talk more about the plan, but it talks, you'll be doing some practicing, doing some game, some game live scrimmage as well. Uh, I think the goal is to also put every kiddo onto a separate team as well. So that when we get to game feel, uh, we got the red team versus the blue team or whatever that may be. Uh, as far as registration goes, you can register in our Park and Rec office or on our website. Um, we have posted a direct link on our Facebook page and Instagram if people want to get that direct link. Otherwise, for parents that have registered with normal Park and Rec programs in the past, you just go through your normal process on our website of going through the website link. Uh, one thing I do want to add as well is that uh, this program, uh, you know, we've talked a little bit about how we want to hit as many kiddos as possible in Northeast Iowa um, or Southeast Minnesota or Southwest Wisconsin. Uh, kiddos that are, this is not just to core kids. This is anyone in the area that would be interested in playing in this fall ball league. So whether you've done a decor park rec program in the past or not, you are more than welcome to join if it fits in your schedule. Our registration deadline for the program is August 30th. So there's still some time to register or uh, call our office if you have any questions about registering. And uh, Coach Nickel, uh, Blake just prompted my next question to you. What is going to be the plans on Sunday afternoons? Yeah, I mean, as I stated earlier, we want to give kids opportunities to play a different position, potentially learn a little bit about their favorite position. So we'll we'll try to do 45 minutes of instruction uh, and we'll switch that up. Some days we'll do more defensive stuff. Some days, we'll, you know, we'll do more hitting and try to get some kids working on pitching. And then we'll have four different teams or how many kids we have. Or our goal is four teams, split them up um, and scrimmage against each other every week. And if a kid struggles in one spot, then we know, hey, we can work with you next week for that 45 minutes before we work, before we uh, play that game. So if you want to try to pitch and you get out there and it doesn't go well, we'll get somebody else in there. We'll pull you aside. We have a lot of guys that want to work with some kids, try to help them and get them back out to the next week. Blake, uh, specifically related to this program, we missing anything? No, just just reiterating. Uh, we're really excited to be working with Coach Nichols' staff. I mean, he's got plenty of plenty of players that are playing for the Luther baseball team. So, um, you know, parents will be working with a lot of a, a lot of different players from all different sorts of backgrounds. So it'll be it'll be a lot of fun, and we're really excited to have Coach Nichols' staff on bat. And like I said earlier too, this program is open to uh, anyone, not just within the decor area. This is open to anyone that just wants to play ball that is a third and fourth grader. So. Hopefully we can make that work for you. And should there be any questions about it, let us know. But um, ultimately our goal is to offer a fun experience like Coach Nichols said and hopefully get a little better baseball and have a lot of fun along the way. And Coach Nichols, uh, anything uh, we're missing? Any uh, final words from you? No, sir. We're fired up for the opportunity to, to get some kids some have some fun on the sand lot with them. And Blake, I'll uh, let you finish this thing off. Uh, obviously, we've talked about the baseball program now, but obviously a, a lot of other things going on uh, with fall registration and the Parks and Rec Department. Tell us uh, what else uh, kids can sign up for and what are the deadlines for those uh, specific activities? Yeah, yeah, you bet. So some of our fall staple programs being volleyball and flag football registration is off and running. Um, the registration deadline is soon, but uh, parents, if you do happen to get past that deadline, feel free to let us know. Uh, give us a call. I'll be more happy to uh, take you in if even if you're a late registrant. Um, some of the newer programs that we have as well this fall that will be a lot of fun um, is this one is a kind of repeating program, but our touch a truck program is set for Saturday, October 7th from 11 to 1 behind City Hall. So that always seems to be a fun program that kiddos seem to be involved in as well. We've got a couple after school programs, uh, one that is going to be a little bit more sports specific called Game Plan and another one that's called Art in the Park. It's a new program this year where kiddos will be doing an art activity at a different park each day that we meet in the decor system. So that will be fun as well. Um, we also will be adding a new program along with some of the other ones we've talked about. Uh, we're doing a walleye fishing clinic as well. So that's right up Coach Nichols' alley. So maybe we get Coach Nichols to be a, a part-time teacher that day too. But our park assistant, Logan Hahn, um, who's been on our team since this spring, will be leading that program. So that's another fun opportunity for actually 
opportunity is adults that will be a specified force. It'll be a fun opportunity for adults to uh, learn from him, Logan a little bit and then also get out of the water and whatnot. But um, Mallory and I in the office have been revamping the website a little bit. So things look very much the same, but we've been adding some pictures and some other art stuff and whatnot. So um, parents, if you're going on the website and you're noticing some nuances, it's um, virtually all the same as you previously registered. We're just trying to add a little bit more color and pictures and whatnot to it. So um, be looking for that and all in the other information is on our website this time. So a lot coming down the pipe, but we're excited for it. Well, I uh, sent out the invite uh, and called this the best Zoom ever, and at least two of the three people involved with it uh, stepped up and got the job done on that end of things. We thank uh, Coach Nickel, and we thank Blake Moen for talking about the new uh, fall ball partnership uh, related to baseball between the Decorah Parks and Recreation Department and the Luther College Baseball Program. Coming up this weekend, it's the Norman Borlaug Harvest Fest in uh, Cresco, and here to talk to us about that is Jason Passmore with Howard County Business and Tourism. And Jason, an annual event uh, to celebrate uh, probably the most famous resident uh, in Howard County uh, this weekend. Uh, sounds like a lot of fun, and most importantly, it sounds like it's going to cool down just a touch Friday through Sunday, and that's probably going to be a good thing. That would be a great thing, Darren. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, I'll take a little cool down and no rain would be great. We'll take rain overnight, just not during our events is always a good thing. But yeah, you know, the Norman Borlaug Harvest Fest, um, our annual celebration over here in Cresco is really to honor, you know, one of the greatest humanitarians to walk the planet. Uh, he just happens to be from our neck of the woods. Um, and so we do like to honor him, celebrate uh, that legacy and, and, um, we do tours out at the Borlaug farm. Uh, we, you know, make sure that we try to let people know about that outstanding life as much as we possibly can. And in the meantime, have a heck of a lot of fun and do a lot of cool things. And I know we touch on this every time we had this conversation, but I think the best uh, part of the Borlaug legacy is the message that uh, gets sent that even though uh, you grew up on a small farm in Northeast Iowa and Howard County, you can literally change the world. Amen to that. That is so true. And, and that's really what uh, brought about the Inspire Day out at the farm with the youth of the area. And, and we are still doing that to this day. Um, it's grown so much that they do a spring and a fall session where, you know, upwards of 300 fifth grade students from the area all over come to, to experience what that farm holds and exactly what you said, Darren, who's next? what can you do to change the world? And, and maybe it's not inventing a, a, a strand of wheat that can grow in a third world, but maybe it's something small, but that's the whole idea of it is uh, Norman grew up in, in this neck of the woods in small rural America. Uh, he went to a one room schoolhouse and changed the entire world. So uh, who's next and what can you add? And let's run down some of the events uh, this weekend. Uh, let's uh, talk about the uh, Friday schedule. Yeah, you know, Friday we'll have our food vendors showing up. So we'll have food vendors all weekend. Uh, we'll have opening ceremonies where we do pay tribute to Dr. Borlaug and, and read some comments there. Um, you know, we just finished a, a huge addition to our schools um, over here and our high school connecting to our junior high and elementary. We've got tours going on for folks to take a look at that. And then inside the tent, when we open up the big uh, entertainment tent, um, we will have a... Uh, have a puzzle contest this year that's new for us. So the, the jigsaw puzzles, uh, bring your team of four and we'll, uh, we'll do that. And we're also going to have some bingo going on in the tent on Friday night. How'd you come up with the idea for a puzzle contest? Uh, it uh, seems one of those obvious ideas. And why have I never heard about this before? You guys are bringing it to fruition. Well, you know, we can't take total credit for it. Uh, you know, everything in, uh, chamber and economic development world is r d it's called rip off and duplicate mm -hmm. and uh we we found it from our snowmobile club the drift runners tried it and they had a great attendance for it uh teams of four get together you're amazed at how fast they can put we've got a 520 piece jigsaw puzzle that's going to be unique we ordered it so it's a it's an actual unique puzzle that you can't find anywhere else uh the teams get to keep their puzzle so that'll be kind of cool um and from what we've understood, these teams are legit and they'll put them together quick. <laughs> that's pretty, sounds like a real, real cool idea, but uh, that's coming up on a Friday night. Of course, a big day uh, coming up on a Saturday, all sorts of fun uh, taking place in Cresco. 
wow, Saturday is just jam packed and, and we've got multiple events going on all the time. Um, we, we do have our cruise to Cresco, our classic car show. Um, downtown is getting redone with all new sidewalks, but we're going to find enough room down there to put all the classic cars. Uh, uh, so hopefully we get a nice dry day. We can see all those that come out. So that's the cruise to Cresco. We're doing our state cook off in Beetle Park. That's the train park along Highway 9. Um, we'll have 25 to 30 cooks from probably 15 states that'll join us here in Cresco to, to make the best steak that you've ever seen in your life. If you get to taste it, you're going to be pretty lucky. Um, we're doing our first annual, hopefully, uh, pickleball tournament. Um, we've got brand new pickleball courts. They're absolutely gorgeous. Um, that's going to be down at Evans. So that's real close to downtown. We are also having our annual uh, quilt auction, which I've heard they have 99 quilts that will be a part of the quilt auction this year. A little bit earlier start time this year, 11 o'clock start time on the quilt auction. Um, and they uh, they take bids from all over the place. That is a really cool fundraiser for our um, our hospital auxiliary. Um, and so that's that's a that's a neat, neat event that we do every year as part of the harvest uh, like I mentioned before, we'll have tours out on the Warlock Farm if folks want to go out there. CUSB just so happens to be celebrating 135 years of being a part of downtown Crasco, basically. Um, and as part of their 135th, they're doing a free lunch. They're doing live music at the bank when we're not doing music. Um, it's going to be a great partnership, which leads into the festivities at night. We've got our parade at 430. Uh, that's our normal time, a little bit different route because of the construction in town. So we're going to start it at the high school and bring it that way, like a homecoming parade. But after the parade is done, um, we've got Corey Farley and uh, Northeast Iowa's own, Decor's own, Corey Farley going to be in the tent uh, starting at around 630 ish. Um, and he's going to play. Hopefully he'll play a long time. Um, so we've got him booked for for Saturday night and expecting a huge crowd. And then you wrap up uh, everything on uh, Sunday with a few more events as well. We do. Sunday, uh, we kind of get to wrap it up. It's amazing how quickly uh, things start coming down. Um, <laughs> but we've got uh, we've got a breakfast out at our country club that's open to the public. We have our last steak cook-off. So if you didn't get a chance to, to sample some steaks, um, the veterans do a dinner for that. So um, that's another nice fundraiser that happens with these phenomenal steaks that are going on. Um, and then uh, the Kello House is a really cool um, uh, tourism spot, museum here in Cresco. And they do a nice ice cream social about two o'clock. And that kind of wraps up the weekend. And of uh, course, uh, you mentioned uh, before we uh, started talking here, it's uh, been a busy uh, summer for you and uh, in your business. Uh, that's a, a good, very, very good thing. Uh, just uh, we've touched on the festival. Uh, what other uh, fun things are happening in uh, Cresco and Howard County? Well, I'll tell you, if you've, you've come through, if you haven't come through Cresco lately, I'll just, you know, forewarn you, there's there's a lot going on. There's a lot of construction going on, which, you know, sometimes uh, that can be frustrating. Um, but there's an alternative to that, and that is not to have anything going on. And we don't want that either. Um, so not only do we have some street projects and sidewalk projects, uh, three new uh, builds going up in this town with businesses going up. Um Right along Highway 9, you'll see those. We've got just finished the, the school expansion, the hospital clinics going through an expansion, our nursing homes going through an expansion. All of these things are under construction. So um, like I said, it can be frustrating, but boy, oh boy, when it all gets done, it's going to look great. Yeah, just need a little patience and uh, the end result uh, will make everybody smile, I'd imagine. Well said. So, and uh, Jason, just give us uh, one final invitation to head to Cresco and uh, celebrate uh, one of the most famous residents uh, ever to come out of Northeast Iowa this weekend. You bet. We're, we're just looking forward to it. Uh, hopefully have that great weekend like we talked about weather-wise. But Norman Borlaug Harvest Fest this weekend, um, August 25, 26, 27. Uh, we've got all of our details on our website at crescochamber.com. You can check it all out. Um, just join us whenever you can this weekend. All right, uh, Jason, we appreciate you taking some time telling us about the event and all the uh, good things going on in Cresco. Uh, thanks for the uh, time, and uh, here's to a great uh, Norman For Borlaug Harvest Festival coming up this weekend. Thanks, Darren. Jason Passmore from Howard County Business and Tourism, the Norman Borlaug Harvest Festival, Friday through Sunday in Cresco.
Again, uh, we thank uh, Trevor Thomas from the Decorah Police Department. He uh, joined us to talk about uh, school-related travel safety with school back in session this week. We uh, talked about it uh, earlier at the start of this program. We're going to have a Decorah Police uh, Department uh, representative with us uh, about once a month to uh, talk about law uh, enforcement-related matters. Trevor was the first in that series to uh, discuss that. We want to thank uh, Brian Nickel, Luther College baseball coach, and Blake Moen from the Decorah Parks and Recreation Department. Those uh, two entities uh, teaming up for a fall baseball league, and we want to thank Blake for telling us uh, everything else that's going on with fall activities here in the Decorah Parks and Recreation System. I also want to thank Jason Passmore. He is with uh, Howard County Business and Tourism. Should be a fun time this weekend for the Norman Borlaug Harvest Festival. Don't forget, each and every week, we put these shows on YouTube. We realize you're busy with kids back in school. You might not. You might be even busier at the, this time. You can't always be near a radio or a streaming device at 9 o'clock on a Thursday morning, but we want to bring the interesting people we have the privilege of talking to to you at a time of your convenience. So uh, if you're uh, out gallivanting on YouTube, I don't know if gallivant's a word, but uh, if it is, if it's not, just go to 8-24 Our Town Program. We also put the links up on all of our LA Communications Facebook pages as well. And we appreciate uh, your support of the show uh, in any way that you uh, consume the content that we produce just another way we try our best to stay in touch with our communities here at LA Communications. Again, thank you to our guests. Again, thank you to Decorah Bank and Trust, our sponsor. And most importantly, we thank you, that's right, you, for tuning in, for logging on, or for watching our town on 94.9 and 99.1 The River.